Welcome to Bangkok. We made it now. I do plan on moving here soon, but we're only here for a couple days networking with some brothers that I met online and that I'm in a, I wouldn't say program with, but join their group, you could say, and now I'm about to go have a night. I think we're going to Top Golf tonight and maybe out to eat, who knows, but it's good to, it's good now that I'm actually establishing these connections at such a young age as well, especially when they've reached a higher echelon of business than I have. So I've really been thinking about what kind of value I can bring to the table and I was writing them down or I wasn't writing them. I was thinking about them and I, I thought about unparalleled loyalty. I thought about brotherhood. I thought about communication. I thought about insights into their life and how to harden their mentality. So I look forward to bringing what I possess to the table of brotherhood and to the table of camaraderie tonight. It is truly going to be another amazing day, truly another gift from God. I forgot to say that earlier. But the topic of today's video is contentment, not contemptment, contentment. Contentment being peace of mind, being happy with what you have. Now, possessing 100% contentment, I would say is actually doing a disservice to yourself. Because especially as a man, you should always long for more, always willing, be willing, always have that taste of blood of wanting to get better, wanting to excel in every measurable metric of your life. But contentment is the main topic of today's video and it's something that I'm slowly starting to take more of, that I'm slowly starting to exhibit so much more than what I used to because I used to not be happy with where I was at. I used to always want to long for more. I used to be obsessed with the future version of myself and while I do think part of that is still in my mind and it always will be, just like I said, not being 100% content with your life, but being content most of the time in certain, in, in most scenarios, I would say. Contentment, contentment. I've recently been diving and delving into philosophical literatures, especially ranging from, and philosophers as well, ranging from the year 50 BC to maybe 200 BC with the time of Socrates, Epictetus, Marcus Aurelius, the daily, not the daily, the life of Stoic philosophers and, and their mentality and what Stoicism truly meant. And now, I can't convey and articulate that meaning currently. Once I finish the book, then I, I feel I will be able to give an extravagant and extraordinary definition when it comes to Stoicism itself because it is a lot deeper than what I thought. At first, I just thought it was showing no emotion in times of hardship and prevailing through it and adapting, but it's a lot deeper than that. Now, this term etymology comes to mind when words heavily change over time, over decades, centuries, and stoic, stoicism is, is that word. So that will be a future video of diving into the world of stoicism, what it truly means or what it meant back in the years of 50 BC, 150, 150 BC. But I started reading and understanding quotes from these people and they all purported and conveyed and articulated the same message around the same message, not directly, but if you had good perspicacity, you can really dive deep into what they were saying and colloquialize it down to a point where you can understand it, you can tell your other friends about it. So I wrote some quotes down that I'm going to share with you all. And then maybe if I possess the adequate amount of knowledge, I can elaborate and extrapolate certain facts that I think will be beneficial to everyone. So Marcus Aurelius, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself in your way of thinking, contentment. Let's see what else we have here. Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu. He, he, I think Lao might be a war general from China. That might be someone else I'm thinking about. I'm, I'm not too sure about this guy, but be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. When you realize there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. One more. Finish it off with Epictetus. Happiness and freedom begin with a clear understanding of one principle. Some things are within our control and some things are not. And you focus on what you can control and you excel and you hone each of those metrics, each of those qualities. And coupled with undying and unwavering contentment, your life will be filled with purpose, filled with meaning. 
there was this word. I, I said it last video, but I might have mispronounced it. I think it's pronounced Ikigai. I think I said Ikigaki last time. I, I'm not sure. Ikigai, I'm going to go with that. Japanese term meaning your purpose of living. Why do you get out of bed every morning? What is your purpose of living? What is that driving factor in your brain that pushes you in whatever scenario arises, in whatever scenario you face, whatever adversary is standing in your way? What pushes you? What is your reason for living? Your ikigai. What is your ikigai in times of hardship? Because in times of hardship, that's when you, that's when you truly find out who you are. And while I will say, in terms of true hardship, I think this past six months of my life has been extravagant. It's been extraordinary. But when the fog clears, I would say I'm still in the fog. When the fog of war clears, I wouldn't call it war either. When the fog of life clears, I feel, I don't know how soon this will be, but I feel there will be an extravagant and heinous and wicked war unfolding in front of me that I'll have to push through. Because I, I really can't explain it, and, that, and that's not something I say very often because I'm all about honing and developing communication to the maximum echelon of man. But it's something that I really can't put into words right now, maybe at the level that I'm at. But when the fog of the life, the path that I'm currently on clears, I feel there's going to be an ex a war ahead of me that I'm going to have to push through. And that will be a true test of courage a true testament to my spirituality, my relationship with God. And I know what's coming. And it's coming soon, I think. But contentment, what a beautiful, beautiful term. And the past couple of weeks, I've said in my previous video, but I've matured mentally so much and I'm just at, I'm just at, the, I'm just at the beginning stages of it. And I have so much farther to go truly on a path, an odyssey of enlightenment, of being in a space, a headspace, being in a realm where you are content with everything, everything, you are happy, you wake up with a smile, even whatever hardship you have to face or go through, you smile through it. Now maybe at times you have to be serious, you have to be willing to kill for your interests, for what you believe in, figuratively, or maybe if it comes to it, I, I don't want to say that or get in trouble for any kind of, but, but being in a headspace of achieving close to enlightenment, because I know in the Buddhism industry, industry, religion, in the Buddhist in, religion, holy, chasing enlightenment, the Buddha was the only one to achieve enlightenment, and I think it, the journey or odyssey of enlightenment is a perpetual journey. It's never ending. It's a perpetual odyssey. And that's an odyssey I decided to put myself on. And it's a, it's an odyssey you have to put yourself on. You have to do it. No one else is going to tell you to chase enlightenment, to chase honing your communication to become the best man you can possibly become. No one's going to tell you to do that. It's up to you. It's up to you. And while I'm on this perpetual journey of chasing enlightenment, like I said, my mind is only beginning to explore the life, explore for what life truly is. Because I'm young, I'm 20 years old. I'm new to this world, I'm young. I don't know very much. And this mindset I will keep for a very long time. But I know now more than ever that I have to be content. I have to be happy with what I have and not become obsessed obsessed with what I want. Like I said, there's a balance. There's a crucial balance that you have to implement into your own life. I'm gonna open up my, back, my, my MacBook. I think I had a couple more points to go over. There was one quote, I'm not sure if I favorited it or not. Hmm. Searching. It might have been a quote by Marcus Aurelius. Aurelius, however you say his last name. But one of the people I look up to, not look up to, one of the people I look for guidance and new ideas when it comes to communication is the two best people I can, the three best people I can put in a frame is my mentor, Dylan Overbeck, 
Luke Belmar and Andrew Tate. Uh, there might be some other people out there that excel in communication that have just dedicated years of their life to being able to articulate to articulate their thoughts clearly and concisely and efficiently and competently. But those three people are the only ones that I've found that have been able to do it. And I want to get to a point where I become someone that I become a person, a man that a young man, someone that I was still in to look up to when it comes to excelling in communication and really understanding the weight of your words. Because there is one verse, when I was on the journey here from Pattaya to Bangkok, and it was about an hour and a half taxi ride, I was reading the Bible and I delved into Proverbs, and I was reading, I read for about 10 minutes, I think, and I wrote this one down as well. And I was looking for a phrase to, to make a an extremely extravagant and compendious YouTube video on when it comes to honing your communication because of course I'm always learning but I have so much knowledge that I want to teach to you all now and I think I found a good quote that I want to guide that course in the path of that video and it's it's short death and life are in the power of the tongue death and life are in the power of the tongue. Words can kill people. They can heal people. Words can start wars. They can end them. Communication is so powerful. And like I said, I have so much to learn, especially when it comes to communicating in public, public speaking. I really haven't done much of that. I've just been talking to the camera. And once I reach a point where I do have to get on a stage and speak in front of hundreds of people, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, because it will come. I have to be ready for it. But thank you so much for watching. This is a short updated video on where my life is at now. And I will see you tomorrow. Peace.